has a tool, as does uh, Pat McCann in the ACTAS and uh, Rayanne Dow as well in the ACTAS program with, with Sports Code. So that allows us to be able to chop our videos up and from the analysis that we take, just drills down and help to put those uh, specific aspects in. The reason I'm saying this is when we've actually gone through the videos, we've recognised that the majority of the videos are for chilling. Marcel's favourite team. So, but that gives us some, some real good snippets in there, some real good classic elements based around the functional game skills. And that's going to be the players up there as well. I'd like you to see if you can recognise what the specific aspects are, what we're looking for, and is there any trends within those videos as well. So we'll, we'll go on, press on, so just there, uh, just in case you do, uh, we were supposed to be in the, the gold room, like I say tonight, uh, we've already been through the, the registration process, if you haven't registered, just go and see Angelo up at the top, get yourself registered, uh, no problems at all, that's just for the coaches, parents and players don't need to do that. Toilets, if you do need to go to the toilet, uh, you can either make your way up out the back there, or come down through the front here, and just there's a toilet down here, or you can actually go down to the ramp where there's changing rooms as well. The toilet, <coughs> mobile phones, I've already heard one mobile phone go off, please turn it on to silent. If you can, it'd be much appreciated, just for the next 45 minutes or so that we're actually going to be inside. Um, and like I say, that stops me from getting distracted. Emergency exits, don't need to worry about that, we'll just congregate down here, uh, should anything happen. The venue itself, we're actually going to be inside for the first part of the session, and then we're actually going to be out onto the pitch for the second part of the session. So hopefully you're rubbed up and you're ready to go. Hopefully the heat's not on too high in here now, and you won't get too bored of this presentation and want to fall asleep. Moving through. If there are any, this session is being recorded. The, the one thing that I got asked last year when we delivered the workshops was, are these videos going to be accessible? Are these workshops going to be accessible to the public? We've actually set up, or I've actually set up um, a, a YouTube channel myself now, so these workshops uh, will actually be on my own personal page. You only have to go onto YouTube and type in Warren Green, and all of these workshops will come up. Also through the Capital Football website, we have our own Capital Football uh, account with Vimeo, and Angelo will be looking to upload that workshop uh, later on this week. So if there's anything that you have missed, it's great that you'd still take notes, but there's always a reference to be able to go back. Uh, as part of your pre-course uh, readings, uh, the coaching process was sent out. That's something that we'll send out every single week, uh, sorry, every single workshop. And that allows you to then start to go through the particular chapters and how we relate that back to the workshops that we actually deliver as well. So through those pre-course readings, Angela would have sent that email out and it specifically was to work to read through chapters 10. Uh, sorry? 10 and 11. Uh, ch chapters 10 and 11. Through those. So hopefully we've gone through that and you've done that yourself. Um, I've given you a little bit of a spiel about what the workshop's going to entail tonight and what we're actually going to go through. Uh, but a little bit about myself as well, if you're not aware, Technical Director of Capital Football. Been here for just over two years now. Uh, my accreditations as well um, in terms of experience and then also uh, working with the FFA in the Coach Education Department uh, also. Uh, both centrally and regionally. Uh, and, and again, if there are any questions that are, that are present to yourself, if there's something that you don't ask in the public forum, then feel free to, to pull me to the side at the end of the evening and hopefully I can address those questions no problem at all. So the workshop, what we're looking to achieve from this evening. Understand how to identify the specific aspects. So I'll just touch on that slightly in terms of, yes, it's the four functional game skills. Yes, it's just about the individual and how we develop those players as individuals to be able to play in a team environment. But do we actually really understand that specific aspect, depending on what functional game skill we're working with? Identify and define the specific aspect related to first touch. So how do we define? What's the process we actually follow? What do we actually go through to define exactly what the problem is, identify that problem and then come up with a solution. And then from putting those two bullet points together, how do we design a skill acquisition session? Um, for those of you who've attended the workshops in the past, you'll always know that I like to, to start with a movie just to get us going. And I think um, having just watched the World Cup recently, this will be a great one for us to see if the volume works.
So straight away you would have recognised that that wasn't from this World Cup, it was from the last World Cup. But the, main, the, the reason that I've actually done that is in terms of the analysis that we, we actually do. Um, Spain were, were taken as a benchmark and they have been for sort of like the, sort of the last five to ten years in terms of the way they play. In terms of the FFA play staff statement, proactive brand of football based effective possession, with a cutting edge provided by creative individuals, these basically do that to the letter. Then what's happened, as we've actually moved through, the rest of the world have actually caught up. And that, leading into this World Cup, has probably been very, very clear as well. In terms of the analysis from this World Cup, I think you can, we'd all agree that it was free-flowing, very, very attacking. And a lot of the team were very, very good at being able to keep the ball, but not only keep the ball, be able to penetrate um, in the attacking third. And I think going through the first sort of um, 20 or odd games or so from the analysis or the statistics that were built up, it was like three goals uh, per game on average, which suggests that the majority of the team participated in the World Cup this year just gone, were very, very attacking and proactive and actually how they actually approached the game. That's not to say every single team was. But it's just a mark of where football's gone in terms of not just one nation adopting that format or adopting that style, but it's as a world, as a global brand, as a global code, it would suggest that that's the way that they've worked. I'm not sure whether some of you have or have not read the, the FIFA uh, documents that are produced after this World Cup, which gives all of the listings in terms of every single team and how they, how they put themselves out there and the qualities that they had and possibly where they lacked. But the majority of the, the, the top four teams all have, were all proactive. But because they were proactive, they also had individual players. Individual players with the qualities to be able to unlock defences. So the likes of Lionel Messi, Ian Robin, etc., etc., those players are key players. And I suppose what we're trying to get across is, is that in the skill acquisition phase, those are the players that we're really trying to develop. Those are the players that we want to work with, work to, and work with. So it begs the question by which is talent innate or makeable? And uh, for those of you who have attended the recent C licence or been on the, the B licences or even been on the coaching conferences that we've delivered over the course of the last two years, I came in to a coaching conference in 2012 and one of the presentations was exactly on that. Is it innate or is it makeable? There's an argument there and everyone has their own opinion. Um, a recommendation for you all, in, including the parents, I'll actually get Anne's later to put the, I'm not sure if it's up on Esther at the moment, is to read a book by uh, Matthew Syed called Bounce, uh, which, which certainly argues that, and it would suggest that it is makeable. And having read that book uh, myself, I would intend to agree with that, that it is makeable, that if you create an environment and you're able to put players in a specific environment with... Uh, certain things in there, certain elements in there, because you've done your homework, because you've planned and you've prepared, the players should move on to the next level and develop at a much quicker rate. Um, so, so like I said, that, that resource will be there. Um, I'll actually get Angelo to, when we send the email out, we can just email out as well. <coughs> up there making these notes, good. All right, so, but it's a, but it's a great book because it, it, it does argue, but as you read through it, uh, the, the research that he's done would suggest that it is makeable. That's not to say that there are players out there that are the gifted players, but it's definitely how do we take a player from point A to point B all the way through and give them then the tools to be able to express themselves without that fear of failure through the environment that you actually create as well. So looking at that, when we uh, talk about coaches, and this is something that we go through through the FFA, you actually see this crop up all the time in the coaching process. The coach expertise model, what that is, and then the vision and philosophy. So as a coach, or as an NPL club, or as a federation, or as a country, as a nation, do we have a firm vision and philosophy? As a country, we definitely do now. Where we've come from in the last 10 years as a nation has been absolutely tremendous in terms of where we started from and where we've gone to. But we're only 10 years in. Japan have a 50-year plan. Our plan, looking at the strategic plan from the FFA, is looking at 20 to 30 years, and we're only 10 years into that. So it's still very much in its infancy in terms of where we're at as a nation. But the leaps and bounds that we've actually made and going to the recent World Cup, where we were given no hope whatsoever, and although we've even dropped in the rankings because of the results that we got, 
I think you'll agree, probably one of the best Australian teams we've seen for a very, very long time in terms of how we actually set our stall out, how we actually adopted that playing style in such a short space of time and demonstrated to the world that these are going up against some of the best teams in the world, probably the hardest for the competition, that we would extremely, extremely, uh, we, oh, sorry, be extremely proud of the, uh, the performances that the players put in. Going into the, the Women's World Cup uh, next year, we're hoping to see exactly the same thing. And looking at that brand of football that we play, it's not just male, it's male and female. It's a national approach, regardless of what gender you are. And again, through the high performance programs that we provide and through the NPL clubs as well, and the NPL will be kicking into the female space again, coming into the next year and going through that process. It's very, very important that it's not men's football, it's not women's football, it's just football for us. And that's the attitude that we take, and hopefully that's the attitude that is global as well. But in terms of that vision and philosophy, how many coaches do you know that work in your environment, and certainly even in our environment, have all of this coach expertise model? So you've got your vision and philosophy, you've got your football knowledge, you know what football is, i.e. then able to then, just because you have that football knowledge, be able to deliver it out on the park. Some coaches are absolutely fantastic in this part, in the training. Some coaches are really, really good in the match, in the management side of things, dealing with players on a one-to-one -one basis, both on and off the field, how they actually interact as well. But how many coaches do we honestly know about all of this? Every single component of the coach expertise model. I don't think there's many out there. I certainly don't think that any of our coaches, including myself, have all of that just yet. That's not to say at one point, at some point, we'll be as close to getting it. But I think we're forever evolving and forever learning. So looking at what we're going through tonight, we'll be looking at the training. That's basically where we're at now. And through the training sessions, and when we go outside and actually deliver those training <coughs> sessions, are we in a space by which we can plan, prepare, conduct, and evaluate? But it's mainly the plan and prepare that we're actually going to work on tonight. So even if we ask you to go out there this evening and actually give us the session that you've come up with in here, we're not looking for how it's actually delivered, it's just have you taken yourself through that process, <coughs> through the planning and preparation. From that, we've got the design side. That's where we're looking at as well. So the defined part, and that's what I just spoke about as well, going through uh, in chapter 10, your pre-shop uh, task was to read the chapters, and if you haven't read those, you've got that in your email, so there's a reference there again that you can go back to. And we've already talked about this, the core skill and the specific aspect that we're going to work through this evening as well. From there, the session objectives. So what is it we're really looking to achieve as coaches? Through the periodization, through the planning that we've actually done and we set our stall out, we know that we're going to be working on 1v1 on this particular evening, our first touch on this particular evening. But what's the session objective? So in this session, I aim to improve the, uh, the, improve the, uh, the player's ability in the, follow, the following player tasks and actions. So what are the individual tasks we're going to give to the players and therefore for them to be able to do it through the actions that they make that's very, very important to us. And that process, like I say, that these guys go through at this moment in time is the tool that we use in S2S. So going into the design component in the skill acquisition phase with developing skills and individuals. Again, we've already discussed this, we've already talked about this earlier on. And then, therefore, what is football skill? And that's a very, very uh, uh, deep question and uh, subjective, objective. Everyone will have an opinion on what is football skill. And I guess that's what makes the game so great in my mind, is that everyone's entitled to opinion. Everyone, not everyone sees the game being played in the same sort of way. And regardless of the fact that we've got a national approach to how we do it, in terms of what these guys deliver within our environment, we try not to restrict those players, restrict the coaches, sorry, in what they actually deliver. So even though I know that they'll be working on 1v1, the only challenge that we would put forward and Marcel would put forward to those coaches is have you really thought about the specific aspect and then through the session planning, when you go out and deliver that, do they then go back and actually evaluate their sessions and say, yes, that worked. Possibly next time if I was going to deliver that session, I might do such and such, etc., etc. So the football skill as it is in the coaching process. So if we 
system ability to quickly select and actually execute the correct football action for the situation. So just a, a lot of random words as it been thought of and put in for something very, very specific. I'll ask you that question. So now we know what football skill is. The next question is, what type of training exercises will help us develop that football skill? And that's a, that's, that's a real uh, big question as well. What type of training exercises? How many of us have turned up to training practices where it's just a random practice? Or a random set of drills and exercises? Or the coach hasn't really planned at all, so they just run through cones all night. Or they run laps around the pitch because the coach is actually thinking of the session on the car on the way to training. <laughs> or are we serious about developing our players? Are we serious about what the NPL is about? And yes, I understand that it is very much volunteer based at this moment in time. But if we're serious about developing players and providing them with the opportunity to go on to the next level, depending on where they're at in the four pillar structure, which we've talked about in the past, I would like to think that coaches are planning, they are preparing their sessions, they are seriously thinking about what's the session, how are they going to deliver that session. So that player walks off the path and they know exactly what that specific aspect was. But they walk off the path not knowing what the specific aspect was, but they loved the session, they enjoyed the session. They're moaning at you because they don't want to go home, they want to stay out there and perfect that particular aspect. And that's the environment that we're trying to create. Do we get it right every single time? We're not saying that, by no means. But if we plan and prepare, it's only going to help us to put ourselves into that space where we can replicate it time after time. So in terms of the design, the necessary elements of training to maximise skill learning. And for those of you who attended the last one and all of the workshops that we do, you'll, you'll hear about me talk about uh, perception, decision making and execution all the time. So what a player perceives, what do they see, what do they hear, and then from what they see and what they hear, the decision that they're actually going to make, are we able to create that environment where we're not being prescriptive, we're not asking them to be robots. We're working with them in that environment to give them challenges, to set up the parameters. This is what we want you to do, but we want you to do it in a way by which you explore yourself. Because we've thought about the session through that design design uh, component, like I say. In particular here, in the design stage. The implicit brain system develops. It's a flexible circuit, and again, you'll see there, players uh, placed in learning situations often enough to influence subconscious behaviour. So repetition, 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 repetition. So how do we get, if we're working on first touch, for example, to create that environment by which first touch is coming out every single time. And again, the one thing that you'll notice in terms of the sessions that you actually deliver, especially in the uh, skill acquisition phase, is that the skill acquisition components all cross over each other. So first touch, running with the ball, striking the ball, 1v1, will all come up in every single session that you deliver. We know that, but what we're saying is, is that if we're in particular we're going to be working on this particular skill, this is the environment that we want to create and get that repetition with that particular skill for, the, for, that, for that evening early. And even though you're only working on that skill for that evening for an hour, 15 minutes, an hour and a half, wherever it may be, try not to get bogged down with it as well. Because you know in your periodization and through your planning of your season that you're always going to come back to it and revisit that anyway. Through that planning and prepare stage. So try not to get bogged uh, down there. As I've already talked about earlier on, the random and variable. variable. <coughs> again, that's what we're looking for. So rather than it being blocked, so again, it's not, we're not asking them, we're not being prescriptive with it. We're not telling them, I want you to run from point A to point B with the ball. Then turn and then come back turn them into robots? How do we get a situation by which, again, they're able to do that, they're able to improve their first touch of their running balls, with that, whatever it may be, by setting up the session where there's lots of different things going on. And, and again, we're going to go through these this evening. We're not going to say that there's going to be perfect sessions out there tonight. But it's more about how do we get coaches, our coaches, your coaches, ourselves as coaches and as individuals to be thinking in that space as well. Having gone through that, we now look at the FFA's uh, three session components. In 
in the skill acquisition phase, so there they are. So in the, in the game training phase, there'd be a four component process that we worked through in the last workshop, but in this particular building block in the skill acquisition phase, the 9 to 13, this is the components that will work with skill introduction, skill training, and skill gain. But because of the way that this sets up, it doesn't necessarily mean that we plan it in this format. Much the same in the game training phase, we would plan the game training component first. <coughs> and that's what I just said there. So now we plan those components, now we, sorry, now we know these components, which one are we going to plan first? And the first one that we'll actually look at is the skill training. So the skill training component in the skill acquisition phase is where you're actually going to get the majority of your time to go in and give your coaching points. This is where you're going to do your teaching. This is where the players are going to do the majority of their learning. Now that doesn't give us license to go in and be regimental and stop standing still every single time. But it's about picking your moment to go in and address possibly an issue as the group, as a uh, collectively, to get the message across. Or are you able to coach on the run and just pull a player to the side and be able to talk to them in that manner as well? Because some things might not relate to the whole group, so why would you then stop the whole session when you can actually just deal with the individual by taking them to the side, quick word in the ear, let them go back out and practice and work through that and exactly the same again and again. So looking through it, with all of the players in football situations where the core skill can be effectively developed, in the context of the team model. So again, if you've read through uh, the coaching process and the team model that we follow, that's exactly what we're looking to use as a resource every single time in our space as well. So always, that's your starting point. And you'll look, when you go into the coaching process and you have a look at the skill acquisition phase in particular, you'll see that there's parts of the team model which have actually been shaded out. Because we're working just as individuals working on the player tasks and player action on the functional game skills, whatever that may be for the evening. So again, there's that resource there. We'll provide that resource to parents as well so they can start to familiarise themselves with the coaching uh, process and the way we take it, uh, put ourselves through that as well. But that's very, very important for us to always use the team model as the resource. That's our starting point and from there, that's where we can build our periodisation and from that we can build our sessions so design order, again I've just said the skill training will come first, skill game will come second, and then we've got the skill introduction as the last part that we'll actually design. So that's what we're looking to do in terms of the design order, because we know that if we plan the skill training first, where we're going to do the majority of the teaching, we should then be able to create the environment where it flows straight into the skill game. So it might be a little bit more restricted in here in terms of there might be uh, goals in all four corners, for example. Or you might have it set up. But when we get into the skill game at the end, how do we replicate or keep it as close to the game as possible? How do we ensure that it's as close to the game by which they've worked extremely hard in that component and that component and that this is now their reward? So going from here, planning this one first, into that skill game, but also use skill introduction as well as a warm-up. And trying to get away from the, the what's perceived to be the old school warm-up in terms of it just being go for a run around the field for two or three times. How do as coaches do we start to take ourselves through that process where we can get repetition on the core skill, even in the warm-up, by which they are slowly starting to increase their tempo. They are slowly starting to warm uh, the muscles up, get the blood circulating, but they're already getting the first touch in, or they're already running with the ball, or they're already getting striking the ball, or 1v1, whatever it may be. Already getting in that, in that into place, in that component there, that's the art of a real good coach, a talented coach that's able to do that. And that comes through a little bit of experience, but also experimenting as well. And don't be afraid to use that, because then once you've got this here, and you've planned this, it should become a little bit easier, sorry, planned this, sorry, should become a little bit easier to do this as well. So that can possibly be a little bit more prescriptive, but does it relate to that? Do they all relate? Does it flow nicely? Because the players don't even realise. They just go away, they have the drink, they come back to the next part of the session, bang, they're ready to go. But for them it's just training. The ball's always involved, the player's always involved, they're playing football. 
That's why they play the game, because they love playing. And he told them, if you give a bunch of gear to a load of kids, what do you think the component they're going to do first? Probably that. They'll set up a game, and they'll do it themselves, and they'll let the game be the teacher, because that's why they play it. Because they want to play the game on the weekend or in the week, whenever it may be. Just having a read through it.
again working with some very, very experienced coaches in the room this evening. How often are we working with the other coaches within our own environments to ensure that they understand that as well? Or, as I've seen in the past, little Johnny is absolutely fantastic, little Billy, see you later. You're not good enough, I'm not going to work with you. It doesn't work like that. And it's even at in, in every level, all players develop at different levels. How do we manage that? How do we ensure that little Billy is just as enthused about training as little Johnny, but they've got different targets? Group step up, step down. And again, that's not just in terms of working with individuals. That can be in the area that you're working with as well. So if it is too easy, do we make the area smaller? Do we limit the amount of touches that they have? If it's too hard, do we make it bigger? Do we give them extra touches, etc., etc.? And again, going back to what I said before, this is all in the coaching process as well. So that is a very quick 30 minutes in terms of what we're looking for with the specific aspects of working in the skill acquisition phase. As I said to you before at the start of the session, uh, if you're in your clubs or you're working together uh, in pairs, etc., etc., that would be great, no problem at all. Don't necessarily have to, to work as, as four big groups uh, as, as a way that this particular workshop is set up. Don't mind working in twos and threes, no problem whatsoever. But we are going to be looking to design a, uh, a, a session now. We're going to take ourselves through that process. So I'm going to leave it in uh, your hands in terms of which one you pick. But what we're going to do now is we're actually going to look at some, uh, some videos. And these are the sort of things that I want us to be thinking about in terms of the core skill and specific aspects that we've got. So taking myself through the 5W approach, great way for analysis for us in terms of what are we looking to identify. So we've already been through the first 30 minutes in terms of the specific aspects. First touch, 1v1, running with the ball and striking the ball. So be thinking about those four, compare those four functional game skills, and then through your own analysis, either as an individual in pairs, threes, whatever the groups you're in, are you able to take yourself through this 5W approach? So what's happening? What is happening, question mark? When? Where is the ball coming from? Something that I mentioned at the start of the session as well. Where is the defender, etc., etc.? Why? Why did the player do what they did? What was the outcome? What were they trying to achieve? And taking ourselves through that process will be uh, an invaluable experience as well. Who, who are the key players that this relates to? Where on the pitch, etc., etc.? So now we're really taking some the game as the starting point, the 11 v 11, or the 9 v 9, whatever it may be, depending on the environment that you're working in and really starting to synthesize that information in terms of it might be happening in the final third, it might be happening in the middle third, it might be happening in the back third. And although we're not going to work in this particular phase on structured build-up, we're going to still take ourselves through a process where we're going to create an environment that unconsciously they're starting to learn, so they start to see it straight away. So with the orientation of the pitch, for example, when we actually go through designing the session. So if we've recognised that a player striking the ball is actually a defending player, we want to be able to get that player facing forward to be able to play forward nice and early. So how then do I create that environment by which, it, in orientation term, it is in the back third, thinking about how am I going to get a defender into a position by which they can face forward to then be able to play the ball forward, striking the ball. That's my specific aspect. That's just one example, and there's many. There's a whole run that you can actually take yourself through. So as we go through this 5W approach, uh, be thinking about that as much as you can. I'll, go, I'll come back to that as well, but we're just going to watch these four videos now and just take yourself through that, that process and see what you come up with in terms of your own analysis.
So just, I'll, I'll leave it there um, with those three as they were. Um, just in terms of the, I mentioned that it was sort of chilly, sort of Barcelona and those ones, the chilly ones might work. Um, but it, I think there's some absolutely fantastic examples in terms of functional game skills crossing over each other there. Opportunities to see every single functional game skill in, in practice, in play. Um, put it in, and I think it probably almost gives it away in terms of when I was opening the loaders up of where we're aiming to tonight. So just in terms of just throwing it out from the floor, what's coming up more and more often from the three videos that you've seen? What particular functional game skills do you think you're possibly working with? Anyone? First touch. First touch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and, and again, I sort of led us into that slightly in Kazan from the start of the presentation in terms of where's the pressure coming from, which players are involved going through that, that three W approach. Um, this last, I'll go back to the first clip because there were some fantastic examples in that first clip that we worked with. So just now that you know that that's basically going to be the, that's going to be what we're going to be focusing on in terms of, so we've defined, defined the problem as first touch, or not necessarily first touch. These are good examples of first touch, and great examples that you possibly might use with the younger players to demonstrate where to take the first touch, etc., etc., based upon where the pressure's coming from. But now the process that I want us to go through now is because we've defined the problem as first touch, in terms of designing the session and working with the skill training component as the starting point for planning your session this evening, how are you, through this analysis, through the videos that we've seen from here, going to set that session up? How are you going to plan that session and then hopefully go out and give a brief demonstration of that session in terms of the organisation and the setup? Like I say, it's not about the, con the conduct. I'm not worried about the conduct. It's literally just about you now planning taking yourself through that process, the skill training component is first. Skill training is the first component that you're going to plan, and that's exactly what we're going to work with in terms of going through that process. And like I say, going back from that, hopefully building the other two components around that, to have yourself a complete session plan, or the start of that. And you might be able to, to go through afterwards, and once you've evaluated, you might think, I might do it a different way. But as coaches, how often are we actually going through how often are we actually looking at games, whether they be senior games, because this is the this is the big not argument, but debate that we currently have is is it better to, to use examples of these players at the top top level, or is it possibly better to use examples of junior players, either in our own environment or another environment, but at the same age, to demonstrate that those particular <coughs> players can still do it at that particular age. And I'll leave that one with you. Half that one, but in terms of what we're doing this evening, just be thinking now that the specific aspect is first touch. If you were to develop a skill training component on first touch based on what you've just seen here, where might it be, how you might set it up, etc. etc. So we'll just play it through one more time and just start to see if you can start to piece, put the pieces of the puzzle together to, to come up with that. <coughs>
going through it again, like I say, what players are involved? And they don't need to know whether it's a back four, middle three, front three, or whatever the formation may by, might be. But what numbers are actually involved in there? Whereabouts on the pitch are those players? To be able to replicate and ensure that you get repetition all the time, how many do we need to have in there? Is there an overload in terms of attackers versus defenders? We need to be able to get success in the short term and then be able to go through the process of step up and step down. So that then, if you've got players, a total of 12 players, do you then just have players waiting up for the side? I would hope not. Hopefully the players are involved all the time. So then do you need to have two practices set up side by side? And then through those two practices that you have set up, then you then merge those together as a progression. So that's the sort of thought process you go through as well. But whereabouts on the field is it? Do you need goals, etc., involved in this as well? Remember that this is where you're going to be doing the majority of your coaching now. So this is your opportunity to be able to go in and address the players. Not to say that you're going to go in every single time, and oh, 100 times in, in the 20 minutes or 30 minutes that you possibly have. But it's making sure that you're thinking about your scripts as well, which we've also been through. And again, like I say, there's an overload of information coming in. But if you structure it, you go back to your coaching process, take your team model, put it all together, synthesize that information, and make it as easy as possible, not only for you to be able to deliver it, but for the players to be able to absorb that information so they walk away from the session totally understanding what the session was about. Specific aspects. So just be thinking about that. Those specific aspects, like I say, first touch to be able to, and then we'll just give some examples. Dribble out a defender. First touch to pass or shoot. First touch to shield the ball, protect it. First touch to get past the defender. So now we're starting to really think about the specific aspects around the functional game skill that we're going to be delivering on that particular evening based around our periodization and our annual plan. So like I said, you know, the plan was to have it into four groups. It's very spread out in terms of uh, where we're located this evening. And that being the case, you may only be a two or three. So we're now just going to give you uh, just a few minutes just to come up with some ideas. And I want you to pick one of those. So pick one that you probably... I mean, feel free to pick one you're most comfortable with or you've delivered before because you want to sit in the comfort zone and you're happy just to, to plod along. Or how do you challenge yourself? So one day that you're not 100% comfortable with in being able to deliver. And if so, I would recommend that you pick that one and give it a go because that's what it's about. It's not about us pulling you apart or me pulling you apart as coaches. All we're trying to do is work together to better ourselves as individuals, as coaches, to then be able to go out and deliver those sessions. So just have a look at one of those four, pick one of those four in either your, you know, as an individual or in your small groups and work through it and just try, if you can, to um, think of the skill training, the skill training component. All right. Now, the, purposely uh, for this workshop this evening, I haven't, I haven't planned the session. I haven't planned the session at all, but what we'll look to do is we'll actually look to go out, see the sort of skeleton that we put together. It is a work in progress, and it's only a short space of time to actually put this into practice. And 
and see how we might be able to take one, two, or even three skill trainings, and then how we might be able to adapt those, and how we might be able to, it might be brilliant, we might have to do nothing at all, but how can we possibly make it better? And then from that, can we possibly get our skill introduction and skill gain included as well? So starting with that skill training, and then getting the skill gain as a second component of the plan, skill introduction, bring them together. And hopefully this evening we might be able to go away. We've got two, possibly three sessions where we've got a template, we've got something to work with. Again, in terms of the FFA and the national approach, the updated curriculum has plenty of examples. But they are only examples. They're not actually, it's up to you then to put the meat on the boats. They're just there as an example for you to take something as a template and then build upon that. And again, this is just about plan and prepare. Don't worry about the conduct. We're not going to smash you for the conduct. It's about just seeing how you're going through that process where we create the environment where the game cup becomes the teacher because we've set it up and we've really thought about it into the finer details of what we're really looking to achieve and what that specific aspect is. So just spend around about, we'll give you no more than uh, just seven minutes, seven minutes to do that. Uh, get into your groups, have a discussion. If you want to come and ask questions, if you want to come and ask Marcel questions, feel free to do so, and we'll take it from there. It's up to you, sit in the comfort zone, etc, etc, but if there's anyone, there was a few of you, I could definitely see scribbling down, getting some notes down, all of that sort of stuff, which is great to see. So is there, I guess, is there anyone, based upon the fact that we've identified that the core skill is first touch, and the specific aspect was one of the four that we had up on the wall. Is there anyone that's willing to put their hand up and possibly set the session up? Just the skill training component. <coughs> Don't be shy, it's Monday night. The quicker someone volunteers, the quicker we can go home. Anyone? Jimmy's looking at his phone, pretending he's busy. Anyone at all? Is there any of our coaches that want to put their hand up and volunteer? <laughs> all right, so this is, the, this is the part by which I'll just pick somebody out then. Uh, let me see. George. Who is you with? Yeah. All right, so basically what we'll do is... There you go. So you get, you get your group together. And like I say, this is just the uh, plan and prepare. So don't... It's, it's not about uh, there's any, any wrong way of doing it or right way of doing it. It's just to be thinking about that space in terms of uh, like the planning and the preparing. Have you actually thought about it? Have you thought about possibly the crop of players that you currently have? The deficiencies might lie in terms of them being as individuals. And like I say, we give the uh, scenario of Billy and Johnny inside in terms of Billy's down here and Johnny's up here. So how do I actually deliver my session by which Billy gets just the same amount of attention as Johnny does, but we might have to step up a little bit further in coaching on the run and working with this individual, and we might have to do something a little bit different down here, but we can still run the same session. We don't have to run two separate sessions. So just to create in that environment where, by which it's the, the game-centered approach, the ball's always involved, the players are always uh, in, involved in the practice, there's no one standing out, side of the practice waiting to come in. You've got 12 players, how do you work with that 12 Some of the considerations that you may need to make in terms of being in club land. You expect to have 12 players, but only eight players turn up. It happens every single week. It happens with us as well. But have you taken that into consideration in terms of your planning and preparation as well? So if eight only do turn up, or if nine turn up, you've got an odd number. So what do you do? Do you just rip your bit of paper up and throw it away and say, we'll just do something completely different? Or are you taking into consideration all of those variables as well in terms of your planning and preparing your session based around what your periodization and your plan is? Just for those of you, because there are some new faces here as well, just in terms of that periodization, last year we delivered uh, five workshops as well. The majority of the workshops were actually inside, so it was more on the theory side of why we do what we do. And, and, and one of the, the workshops that we worked in uh, specifically was on the periodization and planning your season. As I mentioned to you at the start of this presentation, the uh, skill acquisition phase is four years from nine to 13. So in that four years, you've got the opportunity to work with those players on their functional game skills. 
But hopefully, if you've planned your, your season, you've planned a year, how long we, some of you might have them for six months, some of you might have them for eight or nine, but you've got that annual plan, that plan that you're working with with those particular players for that particular season, you're just working on one of those core skills, and then you revisit. So you do the full four, revisit. Full four, revisit. Full four, revisit. And that's the rotation that you have. You don't have to come up with any fancy way where we need to work more three times on first touch and then more on 1v1 a little bit later on. You might do that in the game training phase because it's now they've got the functional game skills, it's developing them as players within the team setting. But in this particular uh, phase, the skill acquisition phase, it's about the individual. So we just go through those four functional game skills and revisit those as well. Um, in terms of that periodization, uh, uh, you would be looking at a six-week cycle. So you would run that for six weeks. So that means you've got the four functional game skills plus the other two, and then you'd come back in. The recommendation now from the FFA in terms of overload and players working um, outside of what they do with you at football, they've got other codes, they've got other uh, school commitments, etc., etc. So they're now actually giving the recommendation that they would do six weeks and then have a week off. Six weeks, have a week off. Um, whether you're able to put that in or not, that's entirely up to you. Is that the right way of doing it or the wrong way? It's entirely up to you how you manage it, but it's just recognising when your players might be tired, might need a rest, and you might just do it um, a little bit more ad hoc, but then still stick into your plan in terms of if you miss a session out, you bring that session back. So that's a bit of on the periodization. There's another workshop which we'll go into that a little bit more as well and how we'll actually develop that and, and, and work with those. Um, and, and basically, as I said to you earlier on inside, we haven't addressed these players yet. So the players, the reason, the, the way that we could have done it is get you guys to participate. You're well past the skill acquisition phase, unfortunately. So it's a lot easier to get these guys in. But I think it gives a good, clear demonstration of that perception, decision making and execution. What do players see, what do players hear, and therefore the thought process that they go through based on what they've seen and heard, and then the execution that they put in based around that as well. So that is what we're looking for in every single session, perception, decision making and execution as often as possible. And then from there, we've got the repetition as well. So what we'll do is, is uh, the, the, guys, the guys are just setting up and, and, and as I said to you before, this is not about picking someone out and absolutely smashing them for their session. Because I think every single session will have its value to it. And you'll take something. There's never been one session that's been delivered that I haven't taken something from it. In terms of it might be the most basic thing. But you can adapt it and you can put it into your session. You can work it in to another session very, very easily. And that's the great thing about it. So when we're, when we're analysing coaches... Please refrain from saying, I wouldn't do that, because let's be honest, I picked him out. No one else put their hand up. You'd just be thinking, if you was to deliver that practice, or take that practice, there's their practice, there's your practice. Is that close? Is it a million miles away? Is it chalk and cheese in terms of what you identified, how you would deliver it, or is it the same specific aspect that you've come up with? And like I say, they do roll into each other. So just use it as an opportunity to take a shot. It's more about the process. It's not about the actual the conducting and the, the evaluation. And we'll do a little bit of the evaluation afterwards. And then, like I say, it's just how we would take their skill training and then put it into the skill game and uh, the skill introduction. Okay. So, Les, are you pretty much set up and, and ready to go? Ready to go. Um, First things to be thinking about straight away, orientation. So where is it, where is it, where is it set up? So uh, uh, middle of the pitch, looking at it, see what numbers have got now. So do you know how many players you've got over there? So they've already done it. So they've already figured out how many players they've got available based around the numbers that they've got now. Hopefully every single player is going to be involved in the practice. Yes. Yeah. All right. Lads, the players ready? Yep. Boys, in you come. <laughs> oh. Okay, so just um, the way it's going to work tonight, boys, is uh, these three coaches have been pulled out because they're the best three coaches that we've got on the sidelines. Hopefully, they haven't heard. 
right. So they're going to deliver. They're going to deliver a session. So they'll deliver a session for you. Just make sure that you're, that you're attentive and you listen. Um, hopefully, it's going to be a very, very good session. I've got no doubts about that. And then, but what will happen is, is that we'll stop. We might stop the session. As soon as we stop the session, all I want you to do is to get one ball in, step outside of the practice, and just start to get into your individual, do your juggling, or get into cruising through and just start passing the ball. It's cruising time, and I want to keep you moving. You're not going to do it too long. So as soon as I stop the practice, get out nice and quickly onto this part of the pitch, go to Stav, and then it's just passing back and forth. As soon as we call you back in, we need all the balls back in to the middle again, and then these guys will possibly show you where they want the ball to go. Happy with that? Ready to go? All right, I'll leave them in your paper of your hands. Bring yourselves out. Bring yourselves out. Don't be shy. Don't sit on the bleachers and hang out. That'll do. That'll do from here, just in case they need to modify the session. That'll do here, just so you can see the session. So again, as, a, as obviously they were just addressing the, addressing the players' um, position phase, we want to try we want to try to keep the players as engaged as possible as quickly as possible as well, and make sure that that was straight into it. So in terms of the script that we talked about inside, that's going to come to life now as well. So in terms of do they have the understanding? They're already asking because they're in, inquisitive about the session. They're already asking about what are the rules. So what are the restrictions that are possibly in place? But probably a consideration to make is they're going to be freezing cold. It's cold night. So one thing might be as a, as a, a good way of doing it um, is can we get them straight into the practice, so straight into the area and familiarise themselves with the orientation. This is the setup. This is where we're at. This is what the practice is going to be about. Okay. So we're spending the young and that's a. Uh, Something that we could get at times is that with the with the older group, you might need to get them in to explain exactly what the set because it's about the team setting. But as individuals, we can get them straight in and we can get them set up nice and early. So now, what you think it is so there's players in bibs, and you haven't heard it because you're in your own groups so setting it up. But just try to think about what they're looking to achieve because we haven't we haven't said it. They've said it to the players. Some of you may have heard it, but you now is just going through that process as well. So just explain the session. Just have a look at the, 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 the organisation and the setup of the practice. Four things. George? Four things. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ah, you got the duck in there as well. That's what we are there, so there we go. So, no, that's what we've asked them to do though. So basically this is actually again now, must remember that this is the skill training component. So we've skipped past straight away, we've skipped past the skill introduction and the skill gain. This is the skill training component. So in terms of the organisation and setup, this is where you're actually going to do the majority of your teaching. So now what we're going to ask you to do based of, uh, upon the organisation in here, teams generations that they've made in here is that they've only got 13 players. So the way that they've worked around that is that they've introduced the kicker. John being the yellow player in the middle, playing for both teams. The teams have to try to get the ball onto the outside and through first touch, can we play into somebody else on that same team? Okay, just... Hey boy, just stay there, just for a second then. All right, so your specific aspect in one sentence is... First touch. Hey, you together and talk about this. Hey, okay. first touch. First touch to create a pass. Yep. But you must bounce, you must go out to the bouncers first. Yeah? Why must you go out to the bouncers first? Not, and there's not, ask it's just a question. Yeah, that's it, that's all I need to know. So, why, why would we have bouncers on the outside? Yeah, so that, but you might be able to go straight in and actually a game set up. But in terms of uh, this, I, it's perfect for me because one, if we put those four players into that trap, we should just face, yeah? So probably less opportunity to get repetition in. But also in turn, first touch to create a pass opportunity, those players can't be practiced in the outset. If you're a bouncing player, you're definitely going to get repetition. Who might get more repetition than anyone else? Or, or the bouncers. All the bounces on the outside, because we want to get it out to them as quickly as possible. So there's nothing wrong with that. The considerations, and I'm sure you're going to do it anyway, would be what are your rotations going to do? So how quickly do you get the bounces on the outside to change with the red player? Yeah, and that, that's entirely up to you how you actually manage that, but that's what we're saying. So now we're going through that. So in terms of the, the teaching, the teaching component now, is what we need to be thinking of because I think the organisation uh, is good. It's got the bouncer in the middle. Is a bad. Why might you make it smaller? You want them to work on their first touch. Big. It makes, possibly makes it too easy for them to get a real good touch to start with. So going back into what we worked on inside, it's about that step up, step down. And like I say, there's no right or wrong way to do this now. But all we're doing is taking you through as many different variables and considerations that you might need to make in terms of how you organise your practice and your setup. For me, this is great. Superb, just fishing in there. There's first touch. Oh, players on the outside have to play forward. They can. This is where you can go in and get your moments in as well. Into the skill acquisition phase and the four functional game skills, there's two extra as well. So there's not just one be one striking the ball first touch, running with the ball. What's the two extras? Communication and what else? Posi positioning and communi positioning and communication. So that now now be a teaching opportunity is that now we start to address the players and say to them, put on, wait, on, wait. And we'll let 
You just let them play. Sorry, I'm... I'm Okay, just hold it there, just hold it there. All right, so the good it is now. We want to be able to get the ball out to who as quickly as possible. In out to the bouncing player. They score the goal, but they come back here to play two or three passes before it went out. So how might I phrase it now so that you get that opportunity for that to happen more often? Brilliant. So now we're starting to think, so there's a teaching moment there. Just be well, just come back, just come back. Red player, into the hot Yep, play to so there. How often now, every time you receive the ball, can you get into the position to see a bouncing player? So I'm not going to tell him how to do it, so it goes back to too often we're saying, no, you can't go there, you need to bounce out to that player. All I'm going to say to him now is, how often can you get yourself into a position where you take your first touch, where you can see the bouncing player? But we've also talked about the two extras, which is positioning and communication. Can he see the bouncing player from this position here? I can see one of them, yeah? So there's two options now. So now he's encouraged to get his head up. So I might, off of my first touch, just step to the side, might be able to play that one into there. If it comes into me, just play back into me. What might be cue for that player now? So we've got can. Can you get into a position by which you can play the bouncing player as quickly as possible? What might I say to this player now? Yeah. How do you, or can, or how do you put yourself in a position where the player receiving the ball can see you and play in the and out of Already done it. So I haven't told him, no, you've got to step into there. So now, just go back to where you were. And off of that, what's your cue? Just play the ball back in for me. Not yet. So there it is. Brilliant. Done. But goal. But we haven't told him how to do it. So this practice is perfect for that. And that's where you get your opportunities to do it. And there may be times where I just play the ball back in for me. My going a whoa, whoa, whoa. Let them play. See if they can discover it for themselves. Great practice, superb. Just play on. Play, play. Hey, superb, well done. Good enough. What we're finding as well is that even though I'm addressing, I'm giving it as well. So now all of a sudden they think, get the ball out to bounce as quickly as possible. Check. We want repetition. Think about where the are as well. Foot's up and off. No. The player will play it again. No problems at all. Instant of repetition. What might do with this practice? Limit, limit the amount of touch. What else in terms of what, what's the problem? Limit the amount of touch. You know? Yeah, you've got a maximum of two touches. No, oh, it doesn't, does it? So we can't stop the game. Oh, no, two touch. It doesn't happen. So what you need to do is and keep it as realistic as possible. Why you get a lot of practice that are set up, and when we talk about one up and one down, it's you get five passes. into the next go. Let's take and play the pass in the first go. Why wouldn't you get them to do that? You've got five passes before you can score a goal. You don't do that in a game. If you've got the opportunity to score, you take the opportunity to score. So just be mindful of those little things as, because in programming that in to take the shot of goal. This particular setup, this particular extra the core skill is first touch. The specific is when you get into a position, first touch for somebody as quickly as possible. Nothing wrong with that. But it's kind of How could we actually get an in this? Yeah, 
So you can create one next to score a goal in behind. Might be able change all about first touch. All right. Okay. With stairs, feel free. Feel free to do so. Folks, lads, just come in. Okay, just. Uh, where's the rest of the coaches? Over there. Just give them a round of applause because they've come out and they've done that, which is fantastic. Um, uh, that, that's basically that's basically just one practice check. In terms of uh, the skilling, so, sorry, the skill gain now. So that's your skill uh, training. Where you're going to see this is what that's what you're going to do. There's a whole lot of things that you can actually just revisit it. So when you go through that whole process, plan, prepare, conduct, evaluate, when you actually evaluate the session, you would say that I only got to here. The so next time when I come back and I actually revisit that session, that's my starting point. So I can recap here and now take it to the next point or to the next level. And then I pick the way through. That being the skill. Any thoughts on how you might be able to modify that to get skill gains? I think, yeah, well, it's, I think it's multi directional moment, but that's, that's what I'm leaning into. So you might, as a skill game, get more, instead of multi, you might, might get more. Actually, in terms of what I said before, this might uh, suggest that we work back, but we don't need to worry about that because we're not into that phase with them. So it's their first touch. So how do you actually hope to just lead them into something? You've got. The bounce from the side, but the way that the goal is scored now is that it must be played in, bounce back on a first touch, first time finish into the back of the goal to count as a goal, and then you've got the skill game. So there's so many different things you can do. You might get the goals in there, make the area a bit bigger, and actually bring the players in and draw them up to get a bigger game. Where I was leading with that is there's an opportunity there to also could that actually be the skill game? It could be, couldn't it? That could actually be your skill game. So if that was your skill game, how might you modify that to make it a skill training session as well? So there's more repetition. What? Yeah, two groups. So if I put that into two groups now, and have them possibly aside, or keep one and that going together, you can get more repetition. In there, Finish off with this as your skill game at the end to actually see what they've done in their smaller areas. Yeah. To you, how you manage it. Of course, it's up to you how you actually do it. It's not as long as you've thought about your number. Might have 5v3, 3v1. Uh, entirely up to you how you manage it. And this is where, because you've thought about the numbers that you've actually got, you're able to go to one up and down, and we're able to that no problem at all. In terms of, that's a skill game, skill training, so we've worked on that. What about skill... Actually, in, include skill introduction into this...
Okay, boys, in your coat, just coming in. Are you all right to lead it, Rob? Thanks. Is this good? Is there making execution at this? That's just very, very simple. But what we've done very well is also is that we've actually taken what? Quite more players left. More players to the outside. To, or what in the more squad based on where they receive ball. Progression to this skill introduction, if you have a there. Defender wins the ball back, or we pass it to start with. They might have gone. The defender wins the ball, so does that player may become the, yeah, so the competition element in there. And we put the competition element in there, surely will do without you even telling them now. Who will they be looking for? So they're scanning because they're looking for the defender. But I haven't told them you need to scan and you need to rub them before the time. All I've done it, I have a player in there. Now the player, before he's even receiving the ball, is thinking, where's the player? Because I don't want to be the defender, I want to be the attacker. So those are some things that are considered well that you can do in there. So it's a different thing. It's a real basic, basic thing. Are the players football's being played, therefore football's being taught, learned, etc. etc. But how often is the skill introduction up too too much standing around? But every single player is engaged at the moment. The bright player outside who are also about them standing there like mannequins as for the in communication and play and play again And you'll see some players are not taking it around the cone, but I'm not going to stop them now and say, no, no, I'm asking to take it around the cone. I'm not going to stop them. 
the questions that I had inside is players to take the ball on the back foot. Why wouldn't I always encourage a player to take the ball on the back foot? Sorry? But why would I not always? If the ball's played into me, play the ball into me, would I encourage it to take foot as a defender at half? No. So that's what we're saying. We're not all. Yes, it's the foot. Yes, it's the easiest part to be able to control. But that's record. That might still be the So there's nothing wrong with that. And again, it just goes back into what are you at for first touch element? That might not be. And if the players reckon. See so balance. Yeah. The control and balance is important. Good first touch. Now you've got control and balance. What able to be able to do now? See so now you can strike the ball or pass the ball. So there's options there. videos. The majority of the time the player was, was under immediate immediate pressure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 100%. So, and uh, you, there's nothing wrong with that. So again, just by saying that, middle of the park, we won't move. Boys, just hold it there. Just find yourself a park very quickly. Number yourself... We done it. Now, what you need to do is, is very quickly, is you just basically get a one player needs the ball at their feet. One player got a ball at their feet. What you do is every player's inside of the area now. Inside of the area, okay? Inside of the area. So now this might be this might be something, that, and now this is on the fly here, off the cuff. Uh, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, go and find a space, one on one side, two go out, one on one side, the other side, win a three out there, go out onto the outside, you're done. All right, all you're going to do is you're going to ball, as soon as you see somebody on the outside, all you're going to do is pass the ball out to them and receive the ball back. Whoever plays out to you must play back straight back to them.
Say, that's not to say that um, you have to use the ones from the curriculum. We'd much prefer if you come up with your own ones and log them and kept them. Because for the technical directors within the NPL clubs, that's their role and responsibility is to keep hold of those and to see that their coaches are actually doing these sessions and logging their sessions. And myself as a technical director for the OTT and being a part of that license process for the NPL, I should be able to walk into any NPL club or any community club and ask the coach, can you give me your session plan? Can you give me your logs? Will I necessarily see everyone's session plans? There'll be a few that'll be scratching around looking for the cigarette packet. <coughs> but that's what we're at. And in terms of the NPL and where we want to be, it is, it, unfortunately, the mindset, we are elitist. We're looking to produce Matildas. We're looking to produce Socceroos. That's not to say that we forget about the community. The community is very, very important because that becomes that becomes the, the vehicle by which we put them into there. So there may be some players that will only do community. But our MPL, 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s, 20s, first grade, is very much the best of the best. And where we want to be in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, is that every single MPL club has their own skill acquisition program. And it's already starting to happen already making inroads and it's fantastic to see and I've worked extensively with many of the coaches that are here now and it's great to always see the new faces that come in. All right, just um, very quickly, uh, the boys, thank you very much for this evening, just give them a little round of applause as well. I'll send you over with Staz over there, brilliant, take all the footballs and the uh, marks and stuff like that. So like I say, it's, um, it's a, a, whole, a whole raft of information, a lot to take on board. Um, these workshops will be made available uh, through uh, YouTube and then also through Vimeo as well. You'll receive a link uh, from Angelo, just depending on uh, when, when he can get it done with his busy schedule. Again, hopefully, uh, I hope that you find them informative. And, and again, it's not about preaching, it's about nationally this is happening. So it's not just happening here in our own backyard, it's happening across the nation um, and it's a collective drive and a collective goal with the federations uh, working under the FFA to, to ensure that the message is delivered and the message is loud and clear. And it's very, very clear now from a national point of view for both male and female football, this is the direction that we're taking. Um, so thank you very much for probably the worst place in terms of weather. Quite lucky that it hasn't rained the last two weeks. It's uh, bitterly cold, and I appreciate your time and your patience. We even got shorts, fantastic. <laughs> You're mad. <laughs> so, but again, thank you very much for your time this evening. 
Uh, hopefully you'll register for the next workshop coming up, which will be next month. You do have value. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to speak to, to myself. Um, and if you, you want to shoot me an email at any time and pick up the phone, I'm more than happy to discuss things with you. All the support that, that is. Um, Thank you very much for this evening. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next month. Next month.